Well, I <laughs> I have been to Atlanta several times. Um, uh, once with Miss Saigon and once with Wicked, and um, a couple times actually with Wicked, and, and also with Finn. Um, and I just freaked out about seeing a bismuth in the yard. She did in the outside uh, uh, area. That was very exciting. There's a lot of Stephen cosplayers here this year. Yeah. So. This is it is actually fun. crazy. Yeah. How many people? Like, and if it's not, you'll see someone from the front, and you're like, oh, they don't have any Stephen gear on, and then they turn around, and there's like cheeseburger back. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's stuff everywhere. Yeah. I don't know if there's there's the same girls doing it this year, but last year, before Blue Blue Diamond's face had even been seen, I we, there was a Blue Diamond like on stilts, like till 12 feet tall, in a panel. Whoa. It was amazing. Um, and I saw That's another blue so diamond. Yes, I did too. She was a normal height. Um, I saw an Alexandrite today. What? I've never seen one. Really? Rebecca showed me a picture of one once. I, yeah, I saw a picture, but not one. Well, we collect cosplay spottings like Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta catch them all. Them. But we don't have to go to graveyards to get them. That's true. Don't you have to go to graveyards to get Pokemon? No, no. I don't play. I'll okay. <laughs> just see myself out. They're in restaurants and parks, aren't they? Social gatherings. <laughs> Yeah, Atlanta's great. Like I've been here once for Momocon and once for Momocon, and uh, <laughs> I I love it. It's it's given a good impression for me, for sure. It's my first time in Atlanta. I got in last night, so I'm hoping that over the course of the weekend I'll get to see all the sites. So I'm excited for that. Um, got the aquarium tickets. The aquarium. Oh yeah. Oh, That's gonna be exciting. Um, as far as what I've recently freaked out about, uh, me and my handler were talking about the new Twin Peaks that came out. That was, that's what I've been nerding out about uh, recently. I've been here once before, but it was for a layover, for flight, and then I was like in this weird hotel. This was like a decade ago. And this guy asked me to play chess. No, but it was just like weird. It was like a stranger. I decided not to. Anyway, it's great to be back in Atlanta, like not in a weird elevator with a strange man. Um, and uh, yeah, so far everybody's so nice. Um, Dee Dee and I had a chance to walk around last night. The architecture is beautiful. Uh, the food's delicious. And uh, you guys are great. So. Hot Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm just saving up. I can't wait for Save the Light. Oh, dude, yeah. 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 Yeah, we, um, I th think we all got to do voices on it, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it was really fun, um, and Rebecca had a personal hand in, you know, crafting the story for that, and it's, it's very exciting. Um, You're gonna be excited when you play it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard it's, uh, already turning out to be a great game, so. Yeah. I think they designed it here in Atlanta, too, if I'm not mistaken. I um, think so. Oh, yeah. I got to oh, visit that's... their studios last year I was oh, here, yeah. and that was, that was really fun. For, um... What I've been playing lately, I have not had the time I wanted to lately, so I've sort of been like just getting on Discord calls with my buddies and doing like nostalgia trips. So we we would go play old games that we used to play on Skype like five years ago when we first became friends. So World of Warcraft, <laughs> League of Legends, Civilization, just like all the the staples that they brought our friend friend group together. I've been wanting to play Mass Effect and Drama because that's my favorite series. I I have not gotten around to it yet, but hopefully. Hopefully soon. Oh, I mean, the, the last game that I played recently was Two Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time, if anyone knows oh. that game, but other, other than that, that's, <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> As the show has gone on, I feel like there's been more of that. Um, usually, just because we're so, like, our storytelling format is so crunched for time in 11 minutes, there's not a lot of room for deviation on the dialogue, per se. Um, but the wording of it, to, you know, make it flow easier out of the character's mouth, certainly. And um, especially at, at sessions where, like, for, for example, when we're recording for the game, uh, when Rebecca's oh, yeah. not, not there, and they're not quite as familiar with, you know, certain rules of the characters or parts of the show bible then you know we have a lot more input there like well steven might say this instead of this or feel this way about this um which is, is always fun because it, it you know it you have ownership of, of this thing you created which is cool
Oh yeah, they let they definitely for the game they let us riff at the end, which is really fun. I yeah. would say in general, I mean, just to kind of add on to what Zach's saying, um, the writing on the show is so good. You, it's not like we have to, right. you know, stray yeah. too much from it anyway. But certainly things that make it um, easier, you know, and more like in that character voice, we can improv here and there. I don't know. We get kind of zany with our reactions. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's. That's yeah. what we, we play. <laughs> efforts, efforts. Oh, yeah. Those are the Fighting best. efforts, oh. yeah. Should we do an earthquake for them? Sure. <laughs> all right. All, 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 all at once. once. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> that became like an inside joke every time we had to do it. Like we didn't know. Like I've never been in an earthquake. I've lived in California for ten years. And I don't know. What that <laughs> Especially in a cartoon. Well, I mean, I've slept through most California That's been earthquakes. Me. Yeah. Oh. I have not. I was there for the big one in 94. You were? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't play very, I don't play video games, but I watch my kids play video games. <laughs> and I try to get them off their electronics every now and then and pick up a book. <laughs> stress-free job, <laughs> St very stress-free job. It's so fun. I mean, working on Steven Universe in particular is not very stressful. I just, we have so much fun when we all get yeah. together and record. That's true, but I think maybe you were gonna say well, something Well, uh, I think, um, I don't know if it's stress per se, but certainly, we are pressed for time. We only have X amount of time to do um, a whole episode every time we go in. So yeah, there are points when you know, you'll know you do one or two takes and then maybe two lines after you're like, oh, I should have done that for that. And then you get in your head a little and every now and then you'll be like, oh, can I go back? Like, can I do it? And if they're okay with it, you get to. But I don't know, that's sort of like, you want to bring your best to the mic you know, every time you're there. So I would say there's a little, little bit of stress. I, I, I just remembered um, when I when I recorded for um, It's Over, uh, I was actually doing a show at the same time. Uh, it was uh, called Tommy, and and, and, then, and it was a singing role, but it was really stressful on my voice. So I actually had to postpone my record time because my voice wasn't like perfectly intact for that particular song. And it's a it was a big it was my biggest song to date for the show. And so like I really wanted to be you know um, at my best singing it. So so that was quite stressful. And when you're stressed, your voice is like one of the first things that goes. So, um, so that could be, I guess, pretty stressful. Just I've, to make sure you're. Stressed. I've got a song postponed right now for that very reason. Yeah. Um, I've been under the weather and haven't been able to, you know, go full board. I'm, I'm such a stickler for quality, and everything that I do, I really, I want to be able to, you know, make it sound good because it's there forever and it, you know, it has my name on it. And, yeah. Um, so yeah, it, that's for me the most challenging part of the show is puberty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because the voice became a lot. Uh, I used to pitch my voice down when, before I had a, a lower, um, a lower voice like I do now, and it, it, the voice has become very different. And it's fine when I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in good health. But if I get even the slightest bit under the weather, that's when it becomes difficult. Um, and I really have had to develop a lot of techniques to get around that. Um, and I, I become neurotic about that in a lot of the sessions. So I'm very, like my ear is like listening for the slightest crack. So that, that can be stressful sometimes. You could just take a cue from me and always sound like you're sick. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're actually sick, nobody knows. I, I would love that. Yeah, you can borrow my voice. <laughs> Let's swap. <laughs> Universal one is lip trills. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the high school musical Sharpay, she she had party. Oh yeah. Thank you for joining me. And, uh, I didn't watch that when I was younger. So, uh, do, going through the values, I E O U. Just get your mouth. Red leather, yellow leather, Red any leather, leather any weather. Ooh. <laughs> I've never heard the song. Yeah, yeah, me neither. Oh, hey, there you yeah. go. Tongue twisters are great for voiceover. I mean, it yeah. really just gets your mouth moving. Yeah. Topeka bodega. Topeka bodega. Topeka bodega. Topeka bodega. Oh, I don't know that. Unique New York. Unique New York. Unique oh, yes. New York. You know you need unique New York. You know you need New York. Me too. Oh, oh that's actually beautiful. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it's very poetic yeah, and also it impossible is. That's to uplifting. Say. Yeah. I, I had a session once that mm. I like all these tongue twists were prepared before because it was literally I don't even remember what it was for. It was something very strange, like a vocal sample thing. It was all tongue twisters, like two hours worth really? of tongue twisters. And most of them, thankfully, I'd done before because I had a theater background. But it's like they they had the the ultimate one, which is the the sixth sick sheik's sixth sick sheep was sick, and I had to do like five different takes of that at all different paces. It's <laughs> like, what am I doing? Yeah, I, I remember a couple years back, I actually went to like a group voiceover workshop class thing, and the entire first day was just tongue twisters, which was interesting. I thought yeah. that was a fun class. We had to do them with different emotions, like, try saying Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, but you're sad. <laughs> <laughs> Acting. Yeah. Uh, this is Zamboni from Coldplay Media. What's the best advice you can give for someone trying to break into the voice acting industry? Time out your name, Zamboni? That's right, Zamboni. Oh, I love that. Hey, you like it, right? I love that. Oh, there we go. Yeah. It's unique. Just you like New York. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> you can always count on me to be cheesy. Uh, you know, a lot of voiceovers uh, as an industry I feel like it's become more competitive, especially in recent years. It's like a trickle down effect. So many celebrities are then moving down to TV shows, moving down to commercials. So, work that, you know, used to be just for the average Joe or Jane voiceover artist is now, you know, you're fighting against, not fighting, we're not fighting, but like, you know, you're competing against. It's a real name, so it really has become a numbers game. Um, my advice to any voiceover uh, artist would be, don't worry about the no's, you're gonna get no a ton, or you're gonna get radio silence, you're just not gonna hear back. But just keep putting yourself out there, and um, you know, eventually something will, something will click. It's usually a no through radio silence too. Yeah, you totally. Rarely, like, you get totally. feedback or... <laughs> they don't call to no. reject you. Yeah. yeah. They're just like, they ghost you. Um, do you guys remember the name of D. Bradley Baker's website? Cause that, yes, that, I want to be a voice a actor dot com. It's um, he plays Lion on our show and every animal and creature in every show ever. Um, yeah, and he he's, was he's, in that. Oh, from um, Legend of the Hidden Temple. Yeah. yeah. And then um, number four on Codename Kids Next Door, ah, which okay. I recently discovered was a part of my childhood. But he he um, you know he, he was getting asked that question so much by you know. There's people at cons and around towns so that he just made the website and linked a bunch of amazing resources. And um, if there's anybody that would know, it's him because he he has a very unique technique and he can do things that nobody else can do with his voice. Cool. Um, it's all about finding your own sound. I also think um, ha being able to do a lot of different kinds of voices is very impressive. I'm sure it's always a plus, but to embrace your natural voice as well because a lot of times now people are wanting to hire. Uh, just uh, like your your real regular voice. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, sorry. yeah. <laughs> um, I've noticed since I've been doing voiceover, definitely a shift from cartoony sounding voices to regular sounding. Just the way you talk, because if you have an interesting speaking voice, people will just want to listen to that. And a lot of the time now with cartoons. It's not as popular to have a voice that no one's ever heard before. I mean, it's still, well, that's, there's always going to be a market for that, but you don't have to be able to do all these wacky sounds to become successful as a voiceover actor as well. So there's really no box. Yeah, I think that's just a general tone in, in overall, commercially and theatrically, just authenticity. They just want real, real voices, real connection. You know, nothing like put it on. Like they don't, <laughs> unless that's what they're looking. For. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that that goes for if you're doing a character voice too. It it has to, it, it, it adds the added challenge of being authentic through a filter of not being authentically you, 100%. You sort of have to do the character voice, but also do you at the same time while not speaking as you. Um, so yeah, authenticity is the name of the game, no matter what voice you're doing. That that's definitely a very unique factor of like, well, I mean, Steven Universe is so emotional in so many ways, and so Connie's voice is not the same as my voice, but I still have to sound like I'm experiencing different emotions or in different states while putting on a different voice. So you have to be able to sound real but also not.
I think at this point, as far as voiceovers go, I'm auditioning for anything and everything. There isn't really a specific call, unless of course there is that one you know, where she has to have uh, an Asian accent, which I'm horrible at Asian accents. Oh. I mean, you know, it's, it, I was born in Portsmouth, Virginia, and so I don't have, uh, and I didn't grow up with an accent. But, um, but yeah, I think recently I've just been submitted for anything and everything in the sun. So um, as far as voiceovers goes, yes, absolutely. You know, you're, if you're voicing it, uh, a crystal gem, you know, it doesn't really matter what you look like. You're not human. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I would definitely say voiceovers in general is fairly um, liberating in that, you know, the same day I auditioned to be a rock, I could also audition to be like a cool Indian chick. I don't know. Um, also, do you know that Grace is a quarter Asian? Yeah, I'm, my mom is half Japanese and um, a quarter black, so I'm a little bit of a racial amalgam. <laughs> um, it's funny, you know, I was telling I was telling Didi this story uh, yesterday because the first day that we recorded together, we were signing in at Cartoon Network, and um, when I saw she was going in for Steven Universe too, I was like, Man, there's another Asian chick. Like, I didn't know we were still auditioning. Because in my experience, there's like only one. You know what I mean? And then we get there and like everybody's a minority. And it was just rad. And I was convinced for a while that Zach was half Asian, but he's not. I'm like, oh, we're all of color. That's amazing. Sorry, I messed it up. Yeah. Um, but I would say, you know, this show has done so much for so many people, but especially people of color. It's it's sad that it's taken like almost a whole cast to bring notice to it, but that is the one thing that I think we hear a lot. Um, a lot of the feedback is about how Rebecca Sugar has been able to form this sort of like team of people, and it shouldn't even be about color, but it is. So. It helps. I mean, I think yeah. it's great that Steven Universe has so much representation to kind of an underrepresented, well, an underrepresented, lots of underrepresented communities. Yeah. There's just so many. We we got to we got to hang out with Thomas Sanders off the you know that, that was, was cool. really that fun. was yeah. really fun. In a random park, he just he it's messaged done. us through. It's that? cement. There do, is, there's construction. They're like jackhammers. Wait, the park's gone? Well, they're making it into no. a better park. Oh, I was gonna take a pic the other day and be like, Sorry. no, our dreams have been crushed. But like, no, it's like. <laughs> but you just crushed them like momentarily. It's there. gonna be revived. But that's yeah. like some, that's like the nicest park in I that know, area of town. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You guys Wait, don't care about it. We digress. <laughs> um, we digress. Um, yeah. Angelina. Well, have you told the marshmallow story? From, oh. from like way back in the beginning. I totally. When we had the we had to have like the chubby bunny thing. Yeah, um, yeah. There was an episode. I think it was winter forecast. I think so. It was really early on. Yeah, it was Season really early on. Too. But I remember uh, someone had to go to Rite Aid. It was Matt Burnett. Matt, <laughs> Matt, Matt. When we it got we couldn't get an authentic like chubby bunny like food in our mouth sound marshmallow specifically. <gasps> yeah. So we picked up jumbo marshmallows and we're just eating them during the record and talking with our mouths full and it was really fun. You guys are so method. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are very, we're all very different from our characters, but I think there's a reason why we were cast as those people um, because there are really, there are similarities and I would say that the dynamic between all of us, it, it is authentic. We really are a family. Some of my best experiences working with you guys it's not actually behind the mic, it's when we're hanging out outside of the studio, like, um, you know, we'll come over to my house and we'll do a live stream, or we'll go over to, like, Shelby's, we'll just, like... We'll dance at a candy store. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere we want. Party at CVS. Yes. Yes. Love those extra bucks. And that's not super common in animation, unfortunately, because we're, you know, Cartoon Network shows in general, a lot of them record together whenever possible. A lot of shows don't do that. I worked on a show for a while where I worked with another actor like twice in a two-year run um, and that's you know it worked and the show was great but I, I think for this show specifically the type of show it is and the emotion that it requires I think having us all together whenever possible really means a lot to me. Yeah. 
I think Steven Universe was the first thing I worked on that consistently did group records. Um, and that was a great way to bond with my castmates because I've never really worked on anything where I developed such a close bond with the people I was working with. I love you guys. I love you guys. Oh, you got more. Oh. Can I go? Yeah. I love Ronaldo and his conspiracy theories. Yeah. I think that is like one of the funniest. So funny. And also anything dealing with sour cream and his glow sticks, I'm like on board with that. So, yeah. Yeah. Any any cool kid story is great. Yeah. Um, Onion is my particular favorite. Um, <laughs> just because I thought we couldn't like push the boundary any further than Onion Trade and then we had Onion Friend and I was like, <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Plus I'm biased because I, I do his little voices when he does them, so and whenever there's an onion episode I get very like emotionally. <laughs> can, you, can you do one? <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. It's crazy. Right? It's also yeah, pumpkin. It's controversial. Yeah, pumpkin, all the watermelon Stevens, uh, Lonely Blade in the video game. Um, we're all crying breakfast friends, I think. Yes, crying breakfast friends. I can't remember which one, though. I can't remember. They just cast me as food, generally. Yeah, I think it was pear. And we're on Camp Hunting Hearts. That's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was the ticket, the movie ticket girl? Who I think is Ronaldo's ex girl. Oh, ex lover? I think so. I didn't pick up on that. Yeah. I, I, I don't know, know that I was there for all of that record. Oh, yeah. That's another little subplot. Yeah. Yes. There's so much going on in the show, I believe. But I, I do monsters. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I did one of the Nightmare Hospital monsters. Yeah. yeah. That was fun. Sometimes we're all random townspeople too yeah. Yeah. for like crowd walla. Yeah. Which is funny because I feel like most of the women in the booth, they'll just like alter their voices or go up higher and for some reason I'll just go lower. Like I'll turn into these like giant men. I don't know. All I have to do is use that sound bite, please. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then it's like done. Yeah. Very simple. Favorite word, my favorite word, or Steven's yes. favorite word? Oh, that's a lot, nice twist. Steven's favorite word. Arrivederci. <laughs> <laughs> we just saw that episode where you were you went undercover as an yeah. Italian guy. That is yeah. so funny. That was, oh, the, that was the so, so You're like, man, man, <laughs> And then Connie is like, yeah. um, because you made your last name Pizza Popolis, and I was like, that sounds Greek. Yeah. Because <laughs> so, I had to like step in there and be like, I'm from a linguistics perspective. Yeah. <laughs> that was a fun one. The the whole Italian, like Stephen speaking random Italian, like with correct grammar uh, or correct uh, pronunciation. I I speak like semi fluent Italian, and Rebecca discovered that she's like, oh, <laughs> like why aren't we using this? <laughs> so, so there was the Arrivederci in one of the. Jamie episodes, and then so that one came funny. along, and they gave me like a whole shtick to play with, which was that was a hard record to get through because it was a lot of laughs. Yeah. Oh. What's your word? Oh, my word! I feel like What's Amethyst would have a phrase. She'd be like, "Uh, motor oil buffet." Or like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the song coming all the time. Motor oil. Do you have one? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to remember the characters from. The book series that Connie loves, Unfamiliar Familiar. Oh yeah. That, that's all on its own, fun to say. Yeah. Um, I, I loved Connie's rant where she starts talking about the authoritarian ideals and yeah. like all the like, <laughs> <laughs> political. Yeah, ones. exactly. <laughs> so funny. Uh, hmm. <clears throat> I mean, I love saying Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that, that, that's everybody's. Every, yeah, that is like, everybody's. Yeah. All, they're always like screaming after him, like, "What oh. did you do?" <laughs> and they're wagging. I pretty much sound like that talking to my kids too. I just exchange the name out. <laughs> um, yeah. Have you ever yelled at one of your kids and called them Stephen? No. <laughs> I've heard cool. her yell one of her kids' names in that same tone, though. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And that's yeah. when I realized there's a little bit of Pearl in real life. There's a lot of bit of Pearl. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of bit of Dee Dee in Pearl. Um, yeah, yeah, respect. Respect. <laughs> so good. And, 
and strength, strong, <laughs> in the real way. <laughs> I love that idea. Absolutely. I love that. We, we did the one at San Diego Comic Con, which was like a panel concert, and it was, the fan reaction was incredible. We had so much fun, and it, it definitely my favorite panel we've ever done. We're also, going on tour. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was also great to include um, the, mus the musicians yeah. who all have, you know, they're such an integral part of it. Yeah. Um, so it was great to be live with them. Yeah. yeah. Through the rehearsal process, like it was really fun getting some time. Like, we don't get to see them as often as we see like Kent and Rebecca. Yeah. Um, especially now that you know Ben and Matt are, are working on their own right. cool show, and yeah. it was it was nice to have the game all together. Yeah. We got the band back. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Yeah.